And all this time I had my sound off. What a disaster. Uh, at least I don't know if my sound was on or was off. <laughs> oh, turning to Steve now. So the sound has come back on. Just bear me, folks, I get the sound back up. Here we go. So my sound is back. So folks, apologies. <laughs> Steve, I was taking lessons from you, man. So yeah, just going back to just looking at Liverpool. Drew John. Sorry about that, guys. I switched my microphone off. <laughs> so here we go. So thank you for those messages coming through. So yeah, Liverpool lawnmowers. They've got John Drew, Chris Paul, Sid Moncrief, Marcus Johnson, Bob Lanier, Paul Pressy. There's got a lot to think about. Hence why the discussion is now about maybe moving that, that keeper list. Because we want to see some of these players in the league. Um, but they may be long-term investments. So like a Nate Archibald, like I said, is at the end of his career. But, uh, you know, it could be that you keep him for a while. Here we go. So Ontario, this is Sean's team. He's got some two great centres. Yao Ming. He's got Jerry West. Tracy McGrady's out till January. Walt Chamberlain. Gail Goodrich. I've always liked Gail Goodrich as a shooter. I don't know his percentage here in the game. It's a bit low, but then again, they are playing in a more or less star league. Happy Hairston, I've heard of that name. So this is coming from two seasons again, the 2005 season and the 1970 season. Dikembe Mkhitumbo, of course. Now, in this league, he'd probably be cut because he's 39. But he's a Hall of Famer, and if you go back a few years, there's every chance that you might keep him from, but you'd have to keep him for about forever, really. Maybe you don't want a 39-year-old Dikembe Mkhitumbo. There's Elbin Baylor, who's on a penalty at the moment. Rabbit. So it's a great players here in this league. Great players. It's a good concept. Just tweak it every now and again. Is that the Liberty? Uh, so here's the Liberty. Alan Everson is one of the better players in the league at the moment. Scoring 28 points a game. He's been excellent all season. Billy Cunningham, I think, was a Philly. Philly. Philadelphia uh, 76er. So you can see the injuries are piling up now. So this is the issue. I, I do recognize that the basketball is quite a, a game where you're going to put lots of sprains and strains on your knees and your ankles. And these guys are going down big time. Here's one of my favorite guys of all time, Carl Cora. I think he's a great shooter. Averaging 1.9 a game. So the trick is, how do you now get these guys? They're all superstars. Iverson, Cunningham, Clark, Webber, Iguodala, Greer. You know, these guys are names even I know, you know. So, why do they perform so badly? When you look at the Motown. If you look at Motown, 6.5 Magic Johnson, right? You go to Liberty, 8.2 Allen Iverson. As point guards go, maybe Iversons may be hogging the shots instead of distributing. I don't know. But ultimately, he does have a fantastic set of skills, which is obviously... Manchester, uh, this abomination of a team that I put together, cobbled together from uh, the 2005 Orlando team and the 1970 Knicks. Um, Jermaine Nelson is actually one of my better players, but he's injured. And will he, And the thing is, I, he won't come through. I don't think he's ever going to make it through the, the keeper list, just based on this. Now, I like the fact I've tuned into overall because Jameer doesn't play in my starting eleven. Neither does Grant Hill. Neither does Terko Tuglu. Harry Hado Tekulu. And neither does Dwight Howard. This may explain <laughs> why we're doing so badly. I've gone with the with the New York Knicks kind of lineup. But actually, having a quick look at this tells me I've got maybe the wrong starters just by looking at the overall. You know what I mean? Because 
But Jermaine Nelson, I look at him and think, 7.4 a game, he must be a distributor, a guy that would, would distribute the ball. Let's have a quick look. He can drive, so he can get a lot of fouls. He's good on the fast break. He's a good passer. Maybe, maybe we all need to look at this a little differently. I'm going on the name recognition rather than how the game is. Grant Hill, I'm looking at old Grant Hill in my eyes, thinking, well, he won't last because he gets injured, right? But actually, overall, he's still pretty good. Well, Fraser, of, without, without saying, so what I'm going to do, as I've gone through all, all the teams, oh, did I go Lehigh? Yes, I did. I was saying earlier, Steve, you've got a hell of a challenge if we keep that list going. <laughs> Yeah, so, so welcome in the guys that did come in. Apologies that I uh, didn't look carefully. As uh, as Steve has pointed out. I don't normally switch my microphone off at night, but I did. Um, I won't explain why. But uh, there we are. So that's it. So what I'm going to do is just to have a look at this. I was going to sim some games, which I am going to do, but sim them. It's just change. I'm not going to change my team because that would be unfair. But what I would do for the next coach file I put in is probably set up a team reflecting my overalls a bit better. So, for example, shooting guard would not be Bill Barnett. It would probably be Grant Hill, Fraser at the point guard, right? Small forward, probably Hedo Tekula, center Dwight Howard. So that's completely different to what I have here. And there are situational lineups as well. Which, you know, if you really get into it, you can... I don't want to mess with it because, obviously, that would be unfair because I have control of the file. I've picked up the file. I'm going to hand this back over to everyone else. But what I'd love to do is push the league forward. You know, Bernie's put... Done, Steve and Clue have done a great job putting this together. There are people like... Um, some of us are just not into it, let's be honest. But I think we can if we understand the game a bit more. Uh, not the game of basketball, necessarily, but how the game works... I would probably could do I could probably do the hockey one as well. But anyway, so what I'd like to do is an exhibition. No, I'm not going to do exhibition. I'm going to play the game out. Because I think most people would agree the basketball league, through nobody's fault, has gone rather slowly. So, Bernie had taken it to the 25th Christmas Day. I'm going to take it all the way and be bold to January 31st. If you're watching anyone who disagrees, let me know. A thief <laughs> push it to the end. Well, how many months in basketball? Let's go January, let's do that first. So we're playing through January the 31st. It's a quick look at the standings at the moment. Motown lead over Vegas. So we're pushing it all the way through. Push it, baby, push it. Real good. Uh, but I've already seen where Manchester has some efficiencies to pick up, but I can't change it. So here we go. Pushing it, pushing it, pushing it, pushing it. Pushing it. I've seen Manchester just as bad as they've been. Hagerstown's Downs dropped down to the bottom, but Vegas and Motown continue their lead. And I've got the commissioner here who says push it, so I'm pushing it. Let's go, Vons. So, there is a midlife crisis. Hey, mid midlife crisis. We're taking this as far as we can, probably to the playoffs, or near the playoffs, because I think, unless somebody's in contention. At the moment, Lehigh, who wants it pushed forward, Maplewood are doing pretty well. But if I see them getting close, I'll stop it. So that's January done. Continue, guys. Yeah, into February. Play through February 29th. If it gets close, I'll stop it. Here we go. Here we go. Play to February 28th. Oh, play through February 28th. Here we go. So Motown still have a 10 game lead over, over Maplewood. Looking at the stats, Iverson leads the league in 27 point, 28 points a game. Eaton's still a block leader. Not sure where all the text has gone. Vegas still leads over Mo in this. It's looking like a, a Vegas, Lehigh. I don't know how the playoffs are going to be set up at the moment. 
But at the moment, as we come towards the end of February, Manchester have actually got 17 wins. There we go. Uh, Vegas still lead by 15. Motown lead by 13 and a half. Trump Trafal Mador. What the hell is that name? Trafal Mador still lead. Yeah. Here we go. So at the end of uh, February, as we pushed all the way through, we are now seeing Motown still with a lead. 15 games over Tramalfador. Motown and Mabel. So is there anything close for the playoffs? I don't know who's in the playoffs, but Tramalfador versus Lehigh would be some good games to match up. So everyone's kind of bunched up. Um, Steve, is it the top two that go through? I'm not sure. But uh, I think I would do a quick look at the league in a bit more detail. So there's the standings at the moment, folks. Florida, that's you, Buckshot. You're not as bad as me. <laughs> the best way to put it. Uh, Manchester at the bottom. I've solved my problem. I know exactly where to look now to probably integrate some of these overalls. The problem is their durability. Like Grant Hill is out. So maybe Grant Hill is the only one who doesn't go through. But that doesn't mean I couldn't put Jameer Nelson, Walt Fraser, Turkulu, Howard, and... Steve Francis, maybe, in the same rotation. Because I get better results instantly. I just know that by looking at the overall. So I've learned something today just by doing this. So we pushed it all the way. Vegas looking really good. So Motown looking good. So the closest together at the moment are, I mean, I don't know what the playoff situation is. So where the hell is Rick Berry? So what's your team, Midlife? Let's have a look. Rick Berry. Uh, I don't know if that's your team. Let's have a look. Where is Rick Barry, folks? So we need to look at slightly different to the way baseball set up. Let's go to reports, players. Where's database? Okay, here we go. Where is Rick Barry? Here he is. So Rick Barry at the moment, the Miami Greyhound for Tramalfador, is currently playing relatively well. Now, I think it gives it a score, doesn't it? He's currently, per game, 25.4 points per game. I don't know if that's good or bad. It's, it's pretty good, I'd say. He's pretty even on the home and road. He's kind of 42 point high. Trial fan door. Oh, hold on. Trow Famador, right, Trow Famador. So here we are. So he's ERA adjusted, by the way. So Steve showed me that this kind of gives him he's 48% above average on point scoring, 4% above in four in field goal. This is a great Rick Barry. 1970 to 71. Rick Barry for Trow Famador. So he's playing well. Uh, is he on the leaderboards? I think you might be wanting to know. Yes, no, I don't think he is. But he's injury prone, as you said. If anyone wants to look at anything else, let me know. There is a Wally. He's currently 24 points above average in the era adjusted. He's, this is the season he's in. This is a lot of detail here, actually. A lot of detail. Yeah, I don't think he's qualified for leaderboard. But he's definitely, in terms of points per game, he's around this area here. So, you know, just like I said, I just wanted to make sure we get some interest back in this thing. Because people have put the effort in to do it. I have put less in, but this is my effort now. And I've learned something to do with this lineup I've got. You know what I mean? So, what I'm going to do is neatly wrap that up. In fact, let's go. Fuck it. Excuse my language. Here we go. Uh, upcoming games. So, the season ends in the end of March but there are playoff contenders so I don't want to not give them the opportunity to do something because I imagine in playoffs there's only two leagues are we going to go straight to a final between Vegas and Motown I'd imagine Trauma Tra <laughs> Chau Famador will want to get into the playoffs if there's some system and maybe it's just a top two I can't remember what's what so I think it's, it'll be uh, 
behoove me and everyone else to think about playing out some of these games as we get to the playoffs or does everyone just want to run to the playoffs i'll let steve clue decide with bernie broadcasting this and slash and i know midlife you're invested in this as well i think i should wait i am tempted to play the whole damn thing out but um that's me being, being, being selfish i think i should wait to see some of these games should be broadcast so for example if i go to the scheduled gaining games at least we've now moved it a couple of months because it was dragging its feet. There's Tramel Fedor versus Manchester. I could do that game right now. In fact, I could do this day right now, the 1st of March. But I could play a game, and I think as the end of the season gets towards the end, I think momentum should start to pick up. Because if we are having playoffs, playoffs, Tramel Fedor have a chance to get in. So do, uh, is it Maplewood? Maplewood have a chance. Texas has a slight chance. But the race is between Jamal Fedor, Lehigh, and even Chicago, which means Ontario is still in the league. Chance. I'm talking about playoffs. Unless we just see Vegas, Motown. So, here we are, without further ado. I'm going to do one week, one more week. But I am going to do, as midlife is in the room, Jamal Fedor, Manchester. And it'll be a highlight situation. It won't be me doing lots of stuff now then the problem is i don't know how to do it the way everyone else does it but i do have my own system human human i'm not going to play as manchester i just i just do it that way sometimes it's too instant game screen and i'm just selling parts of it so here we go hopefully this works Just doing a quick one because you're right, T Villa still in it. Now this Belchione uh, has got me thinking. Was he a New York Nick in 1970-71? Anyway, so we continue. I'm not playing the game myself, although you'll see me have the options. Like here, I'm just going to press CPU. Right. So here's the ball game tipping off. It's tipped off, and Barnett has it for Manchester. Out to Reed. Willis Reed on the outside. He releases and is around the cylinder off, rebounded by Reed. Back out to Willis Reed on the outside, guided by West. And first personal foul, and Reed will shoot one. So the West is playing. Let's have a look at who's on the court for Trum Alphador. Mark Eaton, shot blocker supreme, number 53, playing center. Rick Barry. Melchioni, Bill Melchioni is the point guard. Out of Villanova. Adrian Dantley. This is a deadly team. And Notre Dame. Great shooter. And David West. For Manchester. Willis Reed. The center. Dick Bardell at shooting guard. Dave DeBusher at power forward. Bill Bradley at short. At small forward. And Clyde Fraser. The point guard. So we do, do bits and pieces here. As Willis Reed bounces the ball. Three throw and it's good for three points. Manchester leads three to nothing over Tramelford. Now I wouldn't normally do my own broadcast. I don't like doing that. But because Midlife is here as well, I thought I'd uh, just run his game and maybe do another one afterwards. Here's Melchioni now bringing it up court now for Tramelford. Barry pounding the ball outside, shoots the jump shot, and nothing but that. Rick Barry straight away. That's two points, Rick Barry. Down the court comes Manchester. And it's in the hands of Fraser, guarded by Melchioni. He shoots the jump shot, and it rolls out of bounds, and it's Tramel Fedor ball. Rick Barry on the outside here, and too much mustard on that hot dog. The pass is stolen by DeBusha, and down court come Manchester, one of the worst teams in the league. <laughs> Barnett to Bradley, and uh, it didn't work out for Manchester there. Melchioni to Dantley outside, and with a jump shot from the key, he scores two. So what I'll do is, like Bernie, 
is zoom it forward. Although I do like calling the game, actually. But there's no jeopardy on this one for the Red Rockets. So we're going to come all the way down to the second period. There's six minutes to go. So I've jumped forward. And it's a tight ball game. So by the end of this, by the five minutes and 50 to go in the second period, the Red Rockets trailed from Alphador by only four points. There's a, there's a, there's a surprise. Rick Barry has got 13 points so far. Adrian Dantley, 12. David West, 12 points. And they lead the way for Tremalfador. Mark Eaton's out injured. They've had 14 fast break points. The bench has contributed 6 points. And they've had 6 second chance points. They're doing the damage inside. 16 points. Manchester to this point. Uh, Willis Reed leads with 10. However, they're only 14 points behind. So, you know, they're not doing that badly. Here's West now taking his shot as we rejoin the action. Second period, 550 left. David West with the throw. He lines up a free throw. Good. It's 13 points for David West. Down the court come Manchester. Fraser to Debusher. To Fraser at the top of the key. Right up on him is Macaoni. that so I'm gonna zoom again in fact I'll slow this down just a touch uh, my screen I like it doing go quick but not that quick there we go so if you're watching you can follow the action Adrian Dantley will shoot a pair, 53 to 48. And it's good. Turkoglu enters for Bill Bradley, a small four for Manchester, as Dantley takes another shot. And it's all good. Manchester select the play as they come down the court. And it's stolen by Poltz. Fast break. And Barnett hits him on the arm. So Dantley will shoot two. 55 Trump Maldor lead of 48 Red Rockets. Dantley measures the throw, and it's another point for Dantley. And he's going to be good. 16 points for Adrian Dantley as we come down the court again. Just, just to show off here as we come towards the end of the season, I've, I've zoomed it forward. Here we go. Turkle drives. He ran into Dantley. And let's just keep changing my options. I was playing around with it last night. So just bear with me. Get this right. Let's slow that down. All right, let's do that again. Turkley will take a shot. 48 Red Rockets, 57 Trump from Maldor. Turkoglu hits the shot. Turkoglu should be starting. And Turkoglu with the second. Here's Griffiths now bringing it up court. Daryl Griffiths for Tremalfador. I can see why they're a good team. Griffiths. They have a seven point lead. Griffiths went behind the arc. Nothing but net. Three points for Daryl Griffiths. They leave 57 to 50 of the Red Rockets. Red Rockets come down the court. De Busher, guarded by West. De Busher inside. It's too long, but West hit him on the arm. Third person foul for West. Fifteen foul. West looks like a bit of foul trouble here. De Busher will shoot a couple. The Alien Red Rockets show 50, 60 to 50, 10 points into difference. De Busher shoots the three throw. It's good. Some lineup changes now. De Busher again. Shoots the second. Around the center of the grab by Dentley. And it's all set up again now for Tramalfador. De Busher knocks out the pass to Leaks. So De Busher's got a foul here. Dove will shoot two. 
This is Sunny Dove. What a nice name that is. From 1970, Sunny Dove. Sunny is from St. John's, age 25, 6 foot 8, 200 pounds. We'll take the shot. Dove shoots the first. Didn't even move the net. What a lovely name that is. Sunny Dove shoots the second. Oh, net. Down the court come Manchester. Ariza inside against Rick Barry. And he slam dunks it. Flashy play there by Trevor Ariza. It's 62-53. Tramel for the lead. Sunny Dove inside. Reed trying to stop him. Dove with a short jumper. No good. Turkulu with the rebound. Down comes Manchester. Down the court. Fraser takes him down. Out to Nelson. Back to Fraser. Back to Nelson. Nelson with a shot. No good. Ariza will pick up the rebound with Dove on him. They switch out to Griffith is on Dove on Ariza. Trevor Ariza out of UCLA. Got it by Daryl Griffith out of Louisville. Ariza takes a shot off the rim. Sonny Dove picks up the rebound. Down the court comes from Alvador. Daryl Griffith takes it to the rim. Oh, it's out. Fraser on him. And pulled down by Fraser. They don't get the call. And a fast break again for Manchester. Well, Fraser outside to Turkulu. A 4-1 breakout. And Turkulu kisses off the glass. Four points. 6-2-55 Red Rockets. Dove outside for Tramalfador. That hits the... Oh, it hits. It forces a shot and is tipped in by Leaks. Let me slow my voice down. This game... Uh, so... This is the speed of the game we're trying to work out. Uh, but I'm just showing different aspects of the people's teams. Just to get that extra interest back in the league. There we go. Down the court comes Manchester. Nelson in control, but Griffith steals it. Daryl Griffith down the court now with the ball. Fast break. Fast break. Four and three. Duff to the outside. Inside to Rick Barry. Up to Barry and he laid it up no good. So that fast break unsuccessful. So a couple of changes now. Hunter replaces Dantley at small four for Tramalfador, Tralfamador, and Pulse in at center. Barnett for Nelson and Dwight Howard comes in. So on the court, Matty Leakes is the power forward for the for the uh, Tralfamador. Rick Barry is a shooting guard. Les Hunter is a small forward. Daryl Griffiths is the point guard. And Billy Pulse is the center. So Walt Fraser now bringing it up here. He's out of South Illinois, Southern Illinois, for Manchester. Trying to find a way back into the game. 64-55. Here's Dwight Howard to Turkulu. Turkulu back to Howard and then inside pass. Howard puts it up and it's nothing but net. Down the court come Tralfamador. Griffith outside to Hunter. Back to Griffiths. Hunter takes a jump shot in close. He makes it, although the chalkboard didn't show that. So we're going to break at the next out of bounds. The Trouds in man defense. Barnett outside. Back to Fraser. Looking to pass again, Fraser. Into Howard, backing in on Pulse. On loads of point blank range. Rebounded by Leaks. The Trowels have it. Down the court come the Trowels. Here's Griffith. Take it to the hoop. And inside. Good layup by Daryl Griffith. What a player he is. And the score is 68 57. While well, Fraser brings the Manchester Red Rockets up the field, up the court. Fraser uh, is, is guarded closely by Griffith. So Turkaloo with Hunter on him. Out to Dick Barnett. He's free outside. Barnett puts it up. Out hits the rim. Rebounded by Bolts. The trials on him. Yet another fast break. Daryl Griffiths and Rick Barry leading the charge. Barry lays it up and the pull up jump is no good. But Turkaloo got him with the body. As my voice now begins to warm up. 
Barry bounces the ball, free throw. And Barry tosses up underhanded. <laughs> That's so cool. They remember that he's underhanded. How did they do that? But anyway, Rick Barry with the underhanded uh, free throw. And that's good for 14 points. More substitutes for Manchester, all confused. Barry <coughs> shoots the second, nothing but net, 15 points. Rick Barry, 70 to, to the trials. Red Rock is 57. Down the court comes Walt Fraser. He dribbles into front court. Fraser on the perimeter, sets a pick. Reverse layup, no good. Griffiths with a strong defense. Jackson with the rebound. That's Phil Jackson with the wide shoulders. Phil Jackson out of North Dakota. He unloads at point blank range. Shot. Nice shot, Phil Jackson. 70 to 59. The trials come down the court now with Daryl Griffiths. Fraser on him. Griffiths outside to Rick Barry. Griffith outside. Nothing but net. Excellent jump shot by Daryl Griffith. Griffith's having a good game. Got seven points. Rick Barry's got 15. Adrian Dantley still warms the bench as Manchester bring it back up again. Turkoglu outside. He makes a move to the hoop. And, oh, it hits. It reverse layup. Hit the left side of the rim and pulled down by the trowels. Here comes their fast break. Barry lays it up and he's fouled. As it goes in, it was hacked by Walt Fraser. Barry can go to the line for one. So just show I wouldn't normally do this longer broadcast on it. Uh, <laughs> as Midlife explains, the Tramalfador. Tramalfador, I just call it Trials, man. <laughs> the Vonnegut, that's, that's easier, is it? <laughs> Let's see. So, the Vons. We're calling the Vons. From Alpha Go are the Vons. Midlife can explain that. Here's Barry with the underhand uh, shot. This is game of the week. <laughs> Barry shoots the three throw, and it's good. So, we're coming back down the court as we close out the second quarter. Manchester comes down. Nelson on the outside. He wants to make the play. Turkulu with Hunter on him. Turkulu, let's fly. And it hits the rim and bounces out. The Vons pick up the ball. A few changes now. Green comes in for Griffiths. Green on the court for the first time. Adrian Dantley replaces Barry at short shooting guard. Sunny Dove at power forward. Is this Sunny Dove? Yeah, I love that name. So this is the point, you know, just get a, get a chance to see the players. Like I said, I had no idea who was on the Vons. I didn't even know to call them the Vons. Now I know they have some personality and identity. So it's it just to get some more immersion. Here's Dentley. Pump fakes. Drives. Shoots. As the clock hits zero, we shall zoom in. At the end of the first half, Trump, the Vons 75, the Red Rock is 59. We know where this one's heading. So what we'll do now, folks is zoom 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 baby zoom okay we're gonna zoom all the way down to the fourth period and we're gonna zoom it down to two minutes i don't think the red rockets are gonna come back in this one but i have enjoyed calling the game as it zooms forward you see the ball moving around the screen and as we join rejoin the game 155 left green Shoots the 15 footer, nothing but net. The score, the Vons lead 135 to 111. It does say neutral court, which is interesting. Here we go. Francis, Steve Francis, brings the ball up court for Manchester. Turkulu outside. Beyond the arc, Turkulu hits the rim. Edu Turkulu not having a good game. He's got 11 points. Here's Green now. Out to Hunter. Hunter to Rick Barry. Barry back to Hunter. Bailey sets the screen. Defended by Turkulu. Hunter with a jump shot. Missed it. Rebounded by Hedu. <coughs> Turkulu brings it downfield for down court for Manchester. Francis now has it. Brings it up. 
and Manchester resets. Francis beyond the arc into Howard. Back in the long pulse. Takes the 10 footer. No good. It rattles out. Grabbed by Bailey. And Green now brings it up for the Vons. Here's Rick Barry back to Green. And top of the key is Green. Guarded by Francis. Puts up the 15 footer. Splash! And the Vons take a commanding 137 lead. I'm amazed the Red Rockets have got 111. Here's Francis outside for the Red Rockets. The worst team in the league. After Nelson. Come by Barry. Hits the rim. Rebound by Pulse. Pulse with his 7th rebound. And down come. They're playing a slow offense here. Hunter shoots the bucket and drains it. Shoots the jumper, drains it. 139, 111, 70 seconds left to go. It's a very slow bring up the court now because it's all over. Francis for Manchester. Turkoglu inside the paint. Just to Francis. Francis with a jump shot. Tickles the twine. 113 Red Rockets, folks, but we know this is over. Green outside, and that's it, folks. Trial for Maldor, Trial for Maldor, the Vons, 139, Manchester, 113. Melchiona needed an investigation to him. <laughs> it said New York Nick. That means he's mine. Just kidding. Uh, so we have the game score, which is interesting. Uh, Rick Barry played 40 minutes. He scored 27 points, as did Adrian Dentley. This team will be a force to reckon with. So today I've learned something. It's not just Vegas, and it's not going to just be Motown. The Vons are going to be. So therefore, I suggest that the Vons need to be included in anything that will be broadcast now for the rest of the month. I'm going to zoom it to Friday the 15th. No, the eighth. To give enough time for manager files to come back in. Because I believe the playoffs are going to be key. Here we go. So we're playing through to Friday the 8th. Because <clears throat> I believe there is a playoff race here between Tramal Fedor and Lehigh. And it's still pretty close actually. But Tramal Fedor should get into the playoffs if they can hold on. So there's a bit more narrative. Because otherwise this is Vegas and Motown. To be fair, Bernie and Slash have put a lot into the league as well. So I'm not surprised. But then let's see. Let's, can the Vons make it? Can the Vons make an upset in the playoffs if there's playoffs? I'd imagine there must be some level of playoffs. Maplewood also has a shot, as does Ontario. And I'm sure Sean would love to see his team in there. So if there's only two places to go, clearly Vegas and Motown have made it. But Maplewood and Ontario, and possibly Texas. In fact, Liverpool, they're all fighting for that second spot. There's only three games in it. Same with the Tramalfador situation. They're a bit better off. But Ch even Chicago, I shouldn't say even, Chicago could make it. T Villa dropped out of it a little bit now. So there we are, folks. Just a little bit of a wrap up there, only an hour long of the games, but we've now moved the league forward, which is the objective. And Bernie can pick up and and whoever else. Uh, Steve, whoever wants his calling. I just happen to have a spare hour on a Saturday morning, Saturday afternoon. I thought, sod it, let me get it on. Let's get on with it. So folks, thank you for tuning in. Uh, so two from each division and one gets a buy. So two versus three. Okay, so there will definitely be playoffs. Well, the Vons are holding on whichever way he looks at it. They're holding on. Steve could confirm that. Let's have a look. Steve did say it earlier, actually. I just saw it. Uh, Steve says, division winners get a bye, right, while two place three in each division. What does that mean? Two place three. So, okay. So, with the standards at the moment, we know Vegas and Motown go through. What does that mean, 2v3? I don't get that. Does that mean Tram Alpha Door? Let me get that one right in. Division winners get a buy. Well, two, oh, right, gotcha. So, right, gotcha. Well, this is interesting then. So, Vegas gets a buy. Motown will get a buy. If the season finished today, which means Tram Alpha Door will pay Lehigh, that would be interesting. And Maple Town, Ontario. That'd be, which then means Texas still has a shot. 
Liverpool still has a shot. Liberty has a long shot. There's still a lot to play for in the final season. Guys, get your coaching files in. Even I've learned something today. Get your coaching files in. It's getting tight. It's getting exciting. We want to see the matchup between Tramal and Lehigh. We want to see the Maple Town on Terra if it gets there. But don't rule out Chicago. And Tiva's a little bit further back. They have to catch Lehigh. Agustown, I think, is out of it. Florida's out of it. Tivo looks like they're out of it. But you never know. There's still a month to go. So there's a lot of jeopardy. Get your manager files in, folks. Get them in. The flow is, is, is yeah, Steve, it's hard. It's really, really hard. But, okay, so two will have home court advantages. I like it. So now we've got, now we got some interest, I believe, in this thing. More than we already had. We started off a lot of momentum. We've got three leagues running, but I really want the basketball to shape up as well because I think it's a great game. Um, finding a way to broadcast, maybe just do game of the week, maybe do the whole game. But the playoffs, I definitely think will be interesting. I'd be even willing to do the, the games themselves. It would have been a bit of practice. Uh, Bernie, I know, will do the games. I like Bernie's way of doing it, actually, where he takes the minutes down. He may do a little longer with the format in the playoffs because it's the playoffs which makes sense i actually enjoyed watching my game with them um, from alfredo the fonts a they're called the fonts i learned something now i now say travel from a door but also who the players are rick barry was one that stood out uh daryl griffith stood out i know these are names but now i know they were green now i know that they were they're a midlife team and i think that's what's been missing some identity with each owner with their teams each each owner knows their teams obviously but we don't get invested in the, the, the matches enough the personalities and they're real players playing in a pc game and i think there's more of that we needed so alan iverson we haven't seen but here rick barry's now on the light leaders lift leaders list you can see him now midlife adrian dantley elvin hayes i'm looking forward to seeing i'm looking forward to seeing luke Hudson. all of these guys actually why well, wouldn't i see any of these guys if we go to compare again looking at how we use it in baseball there's all the teams if you look at vegas the average points per game for team i believe is am i looking at offense here yeah i think i'm looking at offense i'm sure it does a defensive one as well here we go so anyway uh, Vegas scored the most, 131. Motown second. The Florida team, ironically, though they're bottom of the league, they're really heavy scorers. So if Buckshot tightens up his defense, you never know. So, you know, that's interesting. Where Chicago, who has a tough team, I imagine defensively, although I can't see where we would look at that on here. It doesn't have any buttons to press. Look like they're one of the better defensive teams. We go to reports, go to teams, and we go down to team reports there you go it may have a bit more interesting right folks so thank you for tuning in it's an hour long so i just wanted to stop it there i shall zip this up and hand over to bernie yeah steve yeah i like the idea of a sim and a recap i like that i think there's yes as mid see there's rick barry I think we need to have a bit more on the statistics as well, like I'm doing now, just to show off a bit more what's going on so people take an interest in where their team is. So Steve says the broadcast better be focused on that versus thing they need to do the actual game flow. I agree. I totally agree. But uh, there we go. So there we are, Steve. A complete personality change of MV from last weekend, isn't it? <laughs> I've been infused. But uh, I think it's sometimes just stepping up because you can't take everything on your shoulders, Steve. Neither can Clue, neither can Bernie. And uh, we, appre we all appreciate the hard work you do. Kiss ass, kiss ass, kiss ass. Maybe I'll get my keeper list wish. Uh, anyway, uh, but I, in fact, on a serious note, you know where I stand with the keeper list on this game. I definitely think it did. It's not needed on football. Definitely perfect on baseball. This one, I think people want to invest in the teams a bit more. Because there are young players that can be kept and all that. That makes it tough, yes. But not all those superstars are going to be peak at every single season. There's going to be differences. All right, makes training stimulate as well. But anyway, so with that said, I will leave everybody alone. <laughs> I <ain't> nobody. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. I think the recaps are nice, Steve. I think, I think, um, I don't know if what I'm doing now is, is, is good enough, but 
just to recap what goes on. Um, so, for example, if I did a game, an exhibition, for example, uh, of say Lehigh and the and the and the van and the Vons, unfortunately, got the same colours. But if I just did a recap, which would be computer, computer, I believe. Zoom. Just 30 seconds from the end. I don't know how to get it to get to the end. This is an exhibition. And it's a final. So Lehigh beat the Trail Trail from a door 115 to 102 uh, in an exhibition game just to see what would happen. Well, it's a neutral court, so there's nothing nothing on this game. But you can see uh Wally Sherbiak does his usual stuff. 18 points. Uh Kevin Garnett, 21 points for Lehigh. The team I've already begun to like already is Devons. This is Midlife Crisis. Uh, less offensive output there, I believe. But you can go through this stuff. Or maybe even sim it, like I said, like Bernie does really quickly. Like a five-minute sim to see where things are. But I kind of like this as well. All right, folks. Expect to see me do a bit more. Yeah, Alta broadcast would be amazing. Oh, my God. But why not? I agree. I totally agree. I know what Al's like with his simming and his, his commentary. I think it'd be great just for that one series or one final game. But Al's such a busy man. Al is such a busy man. But there's potential with this basketball. I'll never give up on it. Even though I wanted to quit it last Saturday. <laughs> I believe there's massive potential. <laughs> the patrons say they lost cause. Steve, it's not a lost cause. You created it. <laughs> it just needs a little tweak, like a nipple. Do you know what I mean? It's just a little tweak here and there. I'm going to get banned now from YouTube. But the point here is, there's life in this league, for sure. We've all put a lot of effort in. And also, we want to see these players. All of a sudden, I want to see your matchup. We well, you know why, because I don't like to see you win that much. But I'd appreciate if you did win it, because you put the effort in. Same like midlife. Vegas, Motel, Maplewood, Ontario. Chicago, Texas. And maybe that'll inspire me and Clue to stop trying to tank. <laughs> Boxers not even trying to take, <laughs> but I just think there's so much more in this league. I, I'm convinced of it. All right, folks, I'm definitely going to leave it here because cricket's about to start. Hey, Bernie, I took it. Bernie, I took up the baton. I upped the pace. We've now got it into March because you can't do it all on your own. Your good friend from across the pond has moved it forward with a bit of commentary and done it to this point. I've just did a game just to show midlife, uh, you know, how competitive his team is. You're the favourite. Yeah. No, I didn't finish it. I finished the end of the year. I mean, we're into March. <laughs> we're into March, but I'll show you the screen, which is where I'm going to leave it. It's one, one month to go because there's jeopardy now. Remember, the second and third team advance to the players and play each other. And then Maplewood, Ontario, would, are currently the, the favourites to go to the players. However... You can see that the Vons, Travel from Adora, I call them the Vons, Lehigh, Chicago are not out of the playoffs, Teville. So there's a lot of broadcasting around those teams to come uh, from either yourself or Slashed. Or if you want me to help, I will always help if you guys are on holiday or something or, you know, whatever. I will help out <clears throat> just because I enjoy it. But also, Maplewood are not guaranteed. So there's a bit more interest there to come, hopefully. Even Clue's not out of it. I'm out of it by a long shot. But anything can change. If you look at the upcoming games, Bernie, down here, you can see it ends March 22nd, I believe it is. So we've done, just so you know, <clears throat> here. Uh, we're currently up to, I left it on Saturday, the 9th of March. So you've got three weeks. So that could be done in a week, I guess. With a bit of help, if we all help you a little bit, or help each other, that could be done in a week. Um, but but now the playoffs are in sight, and I think it's going to be good. And then you could do your magic with your broadcasting, to, especially on some of those tight games in here, because it is tight for the playoffs. And I'd encourage everyone. I said it earlier. Get your coaching files in. The Discord is being rearranged, so it should make it a little easier for people to do it and get involved. 
and it almost get down to where we're doing one coach file a week, if, if necessary, of course. I know I'm going to put one in now because I figured out how to win just by watching this thing today, doing this thing today. But when I say win, not win the league, win a game. Because <laughs> we're that bad. Yeah, so magic numbers. So so Brownie can get to the year done uh, by Monday, he's saying. The magic number, well, would that be too soon, Brownie? Because I think a couple of guys might want to put their manager files in now just to tweak them, just to make sure. So maybe Tuesday Wednesday be better for us to finish it, but you're the king of the broadcast, so. But I suspect people might want to put their thing in. Oh, the, the regular season. Yeah, I hear you, Bernie. I hear you. Uh, if people want to do that. So the magic number for Texas is seven. Uh, yeah, I think so. Uh, let's see now. Uh, so it looks like midlife crisis knows the magic numbers. Let me go back to the main screen. There we go. There's the main screen. So he says Chicago to be eliminated is six. So that, that makes it easier for me. So in the race still for the playoffs, Trabalfador, Trafalfador, Lehigh, Chicago, realistically. And I guess Ontario is the other one with seven, which would make Texas eight, nine and a half. So it's down to a couple of teams now, but there's still some jeopardy in the league. Magic number four. Yeah, and I'll help as well, Bernie. You just tell me when you want, when you need me to join join in, I'll join in. With the basket, with the baseball particularly, obviously, that's my favourite one. Um, but uh, I just sort of help out a bit and move it forward. So I'm really glad you've come on today as well. I was trying to put in the announcements. Unfortunately, my YouTube wouldn't function right, so I couldn't do it in time. So, you know. But there was no game. The only game I did show was a brief shit show from Manchester, just to show... Trump from my door and get used to their players and stuff. But it was a disaster for me anyway, <laughs> as I was expecting. I didn't you didn't actually manage my team. I just let the CPU do it for about ten minutes and that was that. Alright folks, I hope there's any more questions or any more things at all. Let's keep supporting each other with this league. Let's make it right. It's, it's got potential to be huge. As Steve says <laughs> You're welcome, Bernie. And you're welcome, everyone that chipped in. So thank you, Bernie, for coming in. Thank you, Midlife Crisis. Uh, Steve, of course, was here. It was lovely to see Steve. Um, David was here as well. Um, Buckshot was here as well. Thank you, Buckshot. I know he's not a big basketball fan, but he supported the broadcast. Always welcome. So um, I don't know if there's any baseball tonight, uh, but I'm looking forward to watching some. And from me, MV, and don't forget, guys, the Cricket World Cup is on in the US. I think the first game is tonight or tomorrow. Um, I can't remember which city it's in, but it's on. So get used to watching some T20 cricket, folks. The fastest growing sport in the world. Anyway, that's it from me, uh, MV. It's good night from me and good night from him. If I could just turn off my stream, that would be good. <laughs> this is, I don't know what's happened to my keyboard it doesn't follow my instructions